Hey, this is Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours. Uh, this is your Monday Minutes. Um, today, guys, we're going to continue on with the cardiovascular emergencies and the Monday Minutes. And um, this is part four, and it's about EKG monitoring. I broke this up into two separate sections. So this is part A. Going to be kind of a quick uh, video today, okay? Um, and you probably have seen this before probably a million times. But why is it important? I always try to mention why this stuff is important, guys, because, you know, it's not just for exams. It's to help you build your knowledge base. It's to get you that key information that you will often see on exams. And when you see it, it'll ring some bells and help you with answering those questions and answering the scenarios that you might see. Okay. It's also going to help you make better clinical decisions. It's going to help you do your reports. And it's also going to help you when you interact with other healthcare professionals, even if it just means being that professional being your partner, right? <clears throat> so keep that in mind, guys. You know, and my goal, of course, is that if you don't understand this stuff and that it's not clicking for you, that you'll open up your textbook and do some further studying, do some further research. Your textbook, a blog, um, podcast, even something like my Turbo Medic, um, something like that, to go ahead and help you really master the content so that you can be a better clinician, right? It's not just about passing those exams, okay? So let's just get into this, uh, this section, guys, real quick, okay? We talk about EKG monitoring. Um, this is that record of electrical activity in the heart. It gets transferred to the EKG machine or the ECG machine or your life pack, your Zoll, and it's either displayed or you can print it on paper, right? And those boxes that you'll see, okay, uh, represent time, okay? So, uh, as you can see, a little side graphic here on the left, um, you know, your largest box is 0.2 seconds, right? With the small boxes are 0 0.04 seconds. And this ties in when you're trying to measure curious complexes. It ties in when you're trying to measure your P to R intervals and stuff like that, okay? When you go deeper into actual EKG reading and not just the cardiovascular emergency part of it, right? It all kind of clicks in together and this is when it starts to make sense, okay? So um, keep that in mind when looking at the paper, what it was, rep what it represents, okay? And, and again, this is key content, guys. You will probably see things They're asking you what EKG boxes represent and how long each box might be, okay? Um, how, you know, how many seconds the small boxes are, how many seconds the large boxes are, okay? Keep that stuff in mind, guys. Um, and of course, you get your, your your impulses, right? Your positive impulses that go upward, and your negative impulses that go downward. Okay. Now we talk about flat line. That's pretty much just your isoelectric line that you're gonna see, um, and that gets produced if there's no electrical impulse present. Okay. Um, your P wave. This occurs first. This represents your depolarization moving through the atria. That results in atrial contraction. P waves are normally upright and round. Usually your rate of P waves is about 60 to 100, the same as your QRS, right? You usually get one for every QRS complex, right? Now your P to R segment, and that's that pause as the impulse passes through the AV node, okay? And then you get your QRX complex, right? And that's that depolarization that's moving through the ventricle. Your ventricle is contracting, Okay, that's your systole. When you listen to your blood pressure, that's your systole, okay? Now your ST segment. This is that repolarization of ventricles. Usually they'll be flat, but of course you'll have that ST segment elevation that we often look for in the field for the patients having heart attacks, okay? Or maybe ST segment inversion, things like that, okay? So, but normally... Okay, for your normal patients, they will be flat. Now, your T wave, that's that complete repolarization going on. And sometimes you, you'll hear U wave going on, and both of those small waves, you, sometimes you might be able to see it just before the next P wave uh, shows up. Okay, but a lot of times it's very hard to see those waves. Uh, I personally leave that type of stuff for the cardiologist, right? I'm not really looking for U waves. Okay, it's not going to affect my 
my treatment uh, when it comes to that. But sometimes you might see it. It might help you understand what's going on with a particular rhythm. Okay, and that's when we talk about dysrhythmias, those irregularities of the heart. Okay, and what I'm going to do, part B of this uh, this section, is going to be talking primarily about dysrhythmia, talking about. Uh, you know, just kind of listing a lot of the different irregularities you might see, okay? Everything from, you know, MIs and acid-based abnormalities, stuff like that, uh, hypoxia, uh, atrial dysfunction in general, things like atrial stretching because of CHF, stuff like that. We're going to talk about that a little bit in the next video next week, okay? And then we're going to move on to, I just have two more after that, guy. Just be on your assessment management and some other causes of chest pain. That's good to know when it comes to cardiovascular emergencies. Keep in mind, this is not an EKG course, right? This is about cardiovascular emergencies. So we're including all this content because it all ties in to cardiovascular emergencies and what you might see some issues going on and how it affects the patient and what type of emergencies will cause cardiovascular issues, right? EKG reading itself is a whole nother sort of training, Okay. But uh, I'm hoping that this is going to start clicking in and get you interested in reading more about EKGs and themselves and understanding this rhythm than what they look like and reading EKGs. Okay, but for our purposes here, this is the uh, Monday Minutes we're talking about, specifically cardiovascular emergencies themselves and what they are and what, what they all sort of entail. Okay, all right, guys, that's it for me. I'm going to wrap it up today. Like I said, a real quick video. Um, I hope you go ahead and engage with me on social media. You can get me on Twitter or on Instagram. I'm at EMS Safe on both of those channels. And you can also get me on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. Okay, I do a lot of Facebook, try to do a lot of Facebook lives there and uh, just trying to interact, guys, and, and get your feedback and what you want to see and what you need help with as an EMS provider, okay, as an EMS professional, right? Um, Guys, go check out the main site at emsseo.com. Lots of great content there, okay? Uh, there's free stuff. There's some from four, you know, uh, paid stuff there. Um, everything from practice exams, uh, study guides, videos, audios. There's some free downloads, uh, presentations. Pretty much anything you can think of that will help you become a better EMS professional will be there, Okay. Um, and again, the SEO stands for Success, Education, and Opportunity. And my goal, of course, is to get you success as an EMS provider by giving you more information, a path to education, okay, which is going to hopefully open up more opportunities. And those opportunities, guys, don't necessarily mean career opportunities, right? Sometimes the opportunity is the opportunity to give the best care you can to the patients that you encounter, right? All right, guys, that's it for me. As always, I am Jim Hoffman. Uh, send me anything you think of for these videos. You want to see some Monday minutes of your own, right? It's contact at emsofficehours.com. Be sure to go to emsofficehours.com. Look at the previous Monday minutes and the podcast there and other content there on the blog. And leave me some comments and feedback there as well. And don't forget to share and like, guys. I really appreciate it if you can do that. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, as always, I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.